Good evening, you're with the Blueprint Explosive Exclusive. I'm Madhav Das Gopal Krishnan. Viewers, law enforcement and anti-terror agencies have busted a devious conspiracy against India, allegedly operating from within our nation's borders. The NIA has carried out a big crackdown on the Hezbut Tehri, which it is described as an international pan-Islamist fundamentalist organization. The anti-terror probe agency says this outfit is working to establish an Islamic caliphate in India, including by non-violent means. After taking over the probe following the Chennai police filing an FIR against the HUT's coordinator under the stringent UAPA and sections of the IPC on Tuesday, the NIA has raided at least 11 locations across Tamil Nadu. The raids were linked to an alleged anti-election plot by the outfit. NIA teams conducted extensive searches at the houses of 11 suspects in Chennai, Tambram and Kanyakumari. As per the NIA statement, during these raids, the sleuths seized various incriminating material, including digital devices, unaccounted cash and literature belonging to the Hezbut Tehri. Now, this is a live probe and investigations are currently in progress. Let's take this across to Bhavtosh, who's joining us live. Bhavtosh, very, very significant. There are searches that have taken place. There are incriminating material that have been seized. But perhaps what is the most shocking part of it is that this is an Islamist plot. It's been spelled out in black and white by the NIA, which is investigating this particular organization. Yes, Madhav, in fact, uh, this case and this module was busted uh, by Tamil Nadu police uh, in May itself and Dr. Hamid uh, uh, was uh, arrested and once he was arrested, uh, he was questioned by them. Now, because he was arrested uh, under sections uh, which are scheduled offences, uh, the central government, uh, in fact, decided to hand over the investigation to NIA. Uh, Times now had, in fact, access that uh, FIR and it is clearly mentioned that uh, Dr. Hamid Hussain was taking classes and these classes were being carried out to establish an Islamic state or uh, in fact uh, uh, he was trying to in fact uh, 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 trying to in, uh, in fact uh, tell uh, his uh, uh, tell his uh, disciples that uh, India is a land of non-believers and he was trying to wean them uh, towards Islamic state now this is what the NIA had said uh, while uh, taking over this case now importantly uh, his followers also believe that uh, in an un-islamic state they did not believe in democracy as well as in india's constitution uh, and i had said uh, in a statement dr ham will be taken and he will be questioned by the agency now uh, hut or uh, hizbut tahrir is an organization that has a uh, uh, cadre across the country uh, country and particularly in south india uh, the searches were carried out yesterday in 11 uh, uh, locations uh, across tamil nadu but importantly is the fact that uh, the cadre itself believes that india is a land of non believers they want to establish an islamic state and that, that is something which is very worrying uh, for uh, federal probe agencies like nia Absolutely. In fact, uh, creating this kind of disaffection and pushing people towards violence is certainly something that no democracy can allow for. Bhavtosh, thanks so much for joining us with that very, very significant update. We'll now take this across to our guests. Uh, joining us is Professor Madhav Nalapat, who's the vice chair of the Manipal Advanced Research Group. We have S.P. Vaid, former DGP of JNK, joining us. With us also is Ratan Sharda, author. We have S. Harish Mohammed Ibrahim, political analyst, joining us. Before we get into the political aspects, I want to go across to our experts who are in the field of security joining us. And I want to go across to Mr. S.P. Vaid first. Mr. Vaid, if you just look at the kind of uh, you know, information coming out of it, it's quite worrisome because what the NIA is telling us is that this is a case that relates to causing and creating disaffection through social media handles, campaigning against exercising electoral franchise or voting, something as fundamental and basic as that, deemed by Hezbo Tehris as un-Islamic and haram, and it's an organization engaged in instigating followers to overthrow the lawfully established democratic governments through divisive actions. Now, this is something that nobody who believes in the rule of law or democracy can in any way sanction. See, uh, uh, good evening. Uh, I don't think such organizations believe in the rule of law. This is only to get power. And uh, their uh, aim, they are very, very clear. Uh, establish uh, Islamic rule in India. If you recall, uh, in Patna, uh, you had, a, I think, almost a, about a year or two back, we uncovered uh, 
the plan of uh, PFI to establish Islamic rule by 2047. And uh, there are international forces uh, which actually want to convert India into uh, Islamic caliphate because they, they feel that India is a land of disbelievers. And uh, whether it is Al-Qaeda, ISIS, uh, only recently there was a, a report uh, about I think United Nations report about how uh, Al Qaeda and ISIS are uh, uh, very active uh, in, in in Jammu and Kashmir, and I think uh, they they are trying to have their uh, modules uh, by different names also in other parts of the country. And uh, whether it is uh, PFI, Al Qaeda, ISIS, Jash, LET, all they they all have similar uh, ambition and to make India. A, 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 an Islamic uh, nation, and I think uh, the my first thing which should be done in India is to protect the original Sanskriti, that is Sanatan Dharma. Once this goes away, I think the, uh, the India is the only land where you have Sanatan Dharma in such a number. And I think uh, everyone is working to. Uh, okay. Finish off Sanatan Dharma, and I think all right. these are all efforts towards that. What better ground than Tamil Nadu, uh, where where you have a ruling party? Uh, where, uh, Mr. Stalin talks of uh, Sanatan Dharma as a virus. I'll come what? to that. That's a very important point indeed, sir. I'm I'm uh, well aware of it, and in fact, we have panelists who will be discussing that point. But let me stick to the initial point as far as the investigation perspective is concerned. Professor Nalapat, we have seen similar Islamist plots uh, in India. We have seen them across the world. Are there lessons that have to be learned that perhaps somewhere or the other we are uh, lacking? And of course, due credit to our agencies that none of these individuals could uh, perhaps action the thoughts that they had in terms of actually carrying out any kind of attacks. But the very fact that they are propagating this kind of extremely divisive and extremely troublesome material, you know, are there some important lessons to be drawn here? Professor Nalapat. Well, I think it's uh, very, very clear. The Hizbut Tahrir is not uh, a small organization. It has got more than uh, seven, six to 700,000 members across the world. And they have been completely indoctrinated that you must have a fanatic government, a fanatic ultra Wahhabi government, which runs the whole world. Their ambition is nothing less than the takeover of the whole world. And that too, not by elections, not by the ballot, but by the force of the bomb and the bullet and terror. So they are very clear about that, that the ballots are, are, are useless. What is needed is the bullet. And we have seen in some parts of India, Kashmir, for example, efforts to overturn the ballot. And of course, I'm very happy to say that today as well in Kashmir, the Kashmiris have shown that they have understood the importance of the ballot and they and they came out to vote in, in unprecedented numbers. Having said that, I'd like to point out that I think the Tamil Nadu government, of course, the police did act and they did identify some uh, modules. But I would like to say that this has got most likely modules all across India. And I think it's good that uh, so far, uh, not very much activity has taken place. I think it's a tribute to our security agencies that this is happening. The point is very simple. The point is that Tamil Nadu was once the hub of LTT activities. You remember that. And I'm not talking of LTT activities at a time when the government of India clandestinely supported LTT, a time when the LTT was fighting the, the Indian army and basically hostile to India and trying to create violence across India. Unfortunately, several nests were established in Tamil Nadu. And what was the consequence? Apart from the government being dismissed, the consequence was a steep fall in the popularity of that particular state government. The fact is the people of India want development. They want peace. They want good relations with each other. And they are not happy unless the state government joins hands with the right. central government in ensuring that kind of an atmosphere. So I think the Tamil Nadu police uh, made, uh, uh, from what you say, a good start. And I, but, but the NIA is definitely the agency that needs to look into this. Hmm. And I'd like to remind all concerned, especially the Tamil Nadu 
a government and some elements there who have got a complete misunderstanding of Sanatan Dharma. I mean, frankly, they're talking of something that is completely alien to Sanatan Dharma and calling it Sanatan Dharma. Okay. It's like, for example, looking at this mobile phone. If I say it's a dagger, it's not a dagger, it's a mobile phone. So uh, the, I don't want to talk about the mistakes that politicians make. Hmm. I would like to say it's very important for the entire country hmm. that every single module of, of the Hizbut Tahrir, which may I say, has got several hundred thousand members and several billions of dollars in funds hmm. and a huge arsenal of weapons right. and operates in at least about 60 countries across the world. This is not a small organization. Right, right. Professor Nalabad, allow me to come in now because, target because target I think since target. both of you have made points in relation, Ratan Shah, just coming to you, you can respond in fact to what Harish Muhammad Ibrahim says. Harish Muhammad Ibrahim, the question is this. The question is that, you know, there are these certain incriminating materials that have been found. Both our panelists, both are very well versed with our national security and issues pertaining to it, have been very close observers of it for decades. And if they are making a point that Tamil Nadu, a state which has seen terrorism so closely, which has seen, you know, action against LTTE, why is it that such groups are finding ground there? Is it because of the kind of statements or the kind of approach towards Sanatan Dharma, towards Hindutva, mixing up of issues as they are alleging, that is leading to this kind of situation? Uh, first of all, as a state which abides by the constitution, it doesn't work on any kind of holy books, whether it is Sanatana Dharma, or whether it is holy book of the Quran, or whether it is Bible. It is a, it is a state, uh, Tamil Nadu is a state which runs by its constitution as a law-abiding state, as a law-abiding uh, chief minister. We have a potential able constituency which has to break each and every one who is ag acting against the sovereignty of India. And we hold near to our chest. And even when it comes to LTTE or whatever the thing which has been broken now, the Tamil Nadu police have been taken down the uh, culprits to the books and they have forwarded it to NIA for the further investigation. So we have to make sure that uh, police investigating of Tamil Nadu state government has been to the notch and it has been handed over to the NIA for the further probing. So we have to make sure that this is a state which constitutionally abided, which has been taken down with all the secular fabric of this constitution should be made as a, as a holy thing for our Indian uh, government, which is what but the state government Harish, is May I ask you a question? May I ask you one yeah. simple question? I'm reading from what the NIS put out. You can respond to this. Huh. They have said that this sure. individual, Hamid Hussain, who's a key conspirator, collaborated with five others to hold secret meetings promoting the anti-India ideology of this group. And they've also said that the groups, along with several other groups of people, carried out campaigns throughout Tamil Nadu to establish a Khilafa or the Islamic rule in India and had been involved in activities aimed at dividing the people and disrupting sovereignty and territorial integrity of the country. The question then arises and of course our agencies have perhaps been able to prevent them from you know actioning any of this uh, intention but this does raise serious concerns about how these individuals were able to do all of this for such a long period of time. I reiterate again because as a uh... As a law-abiding state, which always act upon whether any any miscreants who was happened to be in an, any kind of religious angle, who is acting against the sovereignty, who is acting against the social fabric of this great country, they will be brought to the books. And there is no doubt about it. And even the state government of Tamil Nadu has done it, which made sure the police department have made sure the preliminary inquiry has been done and dusted and it has been forwarded to the NIA for the further because uh, to certain level okay. of extent there's the been no delay on part of the Tamil Nadu government Ratan Sharda the rule of law the constitution all of that is being upheld <coughs> by the Tamil Nadu government and Tamil Nadu police that's the stand of Harish stand I beg your pardon of Harish Mahmoud Ibrahim please respond to it See, the point is, these days has become very fashionable to keep on, you know, uh, talking about constitution, 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 as if uh, everybody has followed constitution in spirit. Point is, whether spirit or just in the name, because it is same Tamil Nadu where Koyamthur bomb blast took place when Advani Janiyari lost his life. There was, a, there was a car accident, a bomb blast, which was wished away by the same DMK saying it was an accidental, uh, you know, small uh, gas cylinder blast. Then we have people coming up defending them, on what ground? Can anybody claim that the, uh, the Islamists believe in democracy? When the, uh, uh, the so-called secular parties come and uh, speak about Sharia as very important part of life, it should not be overrun by, for example, Waqf board, what are they trying to say? They are trying to use the same uh, 
constitution to subdue the constitution and that is what i fear i fear more the enemies within than the enemies outside india can beat or defeat enemies outside problem is inside saboteurs inside people would remain the coimbatore had uh, the coimbatore ringleader of the blast was given bail by recommendation of all the political parties except bjp and he got a bail then they sent a they made a resolution asking him to be released because he is old or whatever so when you, your heart is with the terrorist with different names by being trying to be very humanist you give them the right kind of support with the need you create the right atmosphere for them to show them humane they are not humane they are going to exploit democracy to kill democracy in india because you tell me any state any islamic state around the world which has got democracy except indonesia which can be called a little free except there where do you have a democracy where there is the life or equal right given to kafirs to people who don't believe in islam so to use the same theme to demand equality demand privileges as something very superior to other people like again i'll repeat democracy vote that is the latest example and then try to be superior to others so you are trying to impose uh, uh, the sharia indirectly imposing it on people because they are liberal that that is where jihadists use that is islamists use and secular parties who support these statements support these proposals are the one who inciting and instigating and supporting these kind of extreme elements unless right. they they behave themselves they try to control themselves and be really true to constitution as something which is equally distant from every religion or equally considered every religion this privilege a view of minorities and privilege view of trying to defend those people with best possible legal aid with okay. best possible support from the governments and the in the those states we will face these problems luckily this government is very very proactive and state police has done what but what is done by police is done by the politicians so my request humble request to politicians is to keep away from this kind of uh, indirect support covert okay. support to terrorists and islamists all right i'm going to request you all to stay on with us we're going to slip into a quick break but on the other side we'll get in responses from each of the other sides and other panelists as well please stay tuned Welcome back. We're of course discussing the shocking revelations that have come in from the NIA about the organisation that they have unveiled the role of his vote Tahrir following raids that have taken place in various parts of Tamil Nadu. Harish Mohammed Ibrahim, before you we went into the break, you would have heard Ratan Sharda and the other panelists. They're saying it's not just the kind of statements coming in from the political class, but also the kind of atmosphere that enables such individuals to function in states such as Tamil Nadu. What? How would you respond to what is being stated by the other panelists? so oh, we can't go ahead with all the individuals because even we have our uh, governor mr r n ravi who is speaking against the constitution saying the secularism is a british concept and it is alien to us i want to reiterate here a state of tamil nadu is a progressive state we don't hold any regressive thoughts whether it comes from any holy books whether it is sanadan way of sarma dharma or whether it is holy book of quran or bible or anywhere we want to make sure any kind of discrepancies any kind of mischievous activities by any individuals who is going against the constitution which is our which we always keep close to our chest all these people of bjp uh, clans they don't want to keep it uh, anywhere the constitution is alien to them but for us a state which abides the constitution will make sure to go and nap any kind of individuals who is going against the constitution who is going against okay. the secularism it is not the okay. one it's second it's not the problem it, of the state country, government it's the a problem of those not... such as mr aryan ravi who are making statements against secularism which is a basic feature of a constitution please respond to that mr sharda well when he talks about uh, you know uh, mr ravi's statement he doesn't understand constitution he doesn't understand any history he has not read it what mr ravi has said is highly important theor theoretical challenge and a debate on which they have no answer was our, uh, bharat not a secular state before 1976 why did founding fathers of the of the nation refused to put secularism in the preamble and also socialism and why dr ambedkar opposed it does he have an answer there have been debates in constitution assembly i would ask him to read those constitution assembly debates you will find even congress people opposing the idea saying that we are secular by nature and there is proof by our conduct of th thousands of years we didn't persecute any person in our entire history while we know what has been done by invaders to our people 
but they have not still taken any action against the people who migrated to India. In fact, they supported them, they nurtured them. So we are not here to uh, be taught about the secularism. It was brought in 76. Does there have any reason to explain hmm. why it was brought in constitution? It was not the fundamental right. And what is secularism? For Indian perspective, secularism is respect to all the religions. When L.M. Singhvi explained the term of secularism... All right. Indian Difference Hindi, in approach of the Western countries and India when it comes to secularism. But the larger question is this. Are some elements, at least in our political establishment, allowing for those who have, you know, thoughts of using violence against our democracy, against our constitution, is there some room for them to at least introspect after incidents like this are reported in the public domain. And of course, kudos to our agencies for ensuring that those who want to pick up the gun are, of course, picked up themselves and not allowed to carry out the kind of such radical or extremist ideologies they have and put them into action. I'd like to thank all our panelists for joining us. Professor Nalapad, S.P. Vaiz, Atan Sharda, Harish Prabhupada, Ibrahim, thank you so much for joining us this evening.